Assalamu alaikum. We are live. We are live now. We are live. आज़ु बिल्लाह मैंने शतानी रजीम बिस्मिल्लाह इर्रहमानी रहीम मेरा नाम डॉक्टर सीरा सरफ अकबर है और हम मैं हाशमानी इस ग्रुप ऑफ हॉस्पिटल में एज़ अ माइक्रोबायोलॉजिस्ट एंड इन्फेक्शन कंट्रोल मैनेजर वर्किंग करती हूँ हम लोग आजकल आपके पास कोविड नाइनटीन के हवाले से भी और डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स के हवाले से सी एम ईज कर रहे कि जिसमें हम हमारा मकसद ये है कि हम हम लोगों को मुख्तलिफ बीमारियों के हवाले से अवेयरनेस है जैसे कि आजकल जो है कोरोना नाइन जो कोविड नाइन्टीन की वबा बहुत ज़्यादा फैली हुई है और सेकेंड वेव के बाद तो हर शख्स तक तकरीबन इससे मुतासर नज़र आ रहा है लेकिन इसमें हम लोग एक चीज़ बहुत ज़्यादा महसूस कर रहे हैं कि और ये चीज़ एक हमारे पास शुरू जब जब से कोविड नाइन का का आगाज हुआ है तब से ये चीज़ हम लोग बहुत ज़्यादा सुन रहे हैं कि इससे हर फर्द मुतासर हो सकता है लेकिन जो किसी अंडरलाइन डिजीज में मुबतला है या उसको कोई ऐसी कोमोबिट डिजीज है लाइक वो अगर हाई ब्लड प्रेशर जैबिटीज इन सब का अगर वो मरीज है तो उसके जो है ज्यादा इम्कान हैं कि वो कोरोना वायरस से जो है मुतासर हो सकता है तो इस सिलसिले में हमें किस तरीके से जो है अपनी अंडरलाइन डिजीज को समझना है किस तरीके से जो है हमें अपनी बीमारियों को जानना है क्योंकि देखिए अंडरलाइन डिजीज में बहुत सारी बीमारियाँ आ जाती हैं उसमें आपके पास हाई ब्लड प्रेशर है जैबतीज़ है आपके पास जो है अगर कोई अस्थमा के या दमे का पेशेंट है कोई अगर किडनी का अगर कोई मरीज है तो इस तरीके के जो हमारे पास पेशेंट्स होते हैं वो ज़्यादा इससे जो है मुतासर हो सकते हैं और फिर अगर खुदा ना खासा उनको अगर कोविड नाइन्टीन से मुतासर हो जाते हैं तो फिर उनको आगे जाकर उस उसकी जो है सिविलिटी बहुत ज़्यादा बढ़ जाती है तो आज का हम आज का हमारा जो टॉपिक इसी से ही इसी से से ही रिलेटेड है कि मैनेजिंग डायबिटीज़ ड्यूरिंग कोविड नाइन्टीन पेंडेमिक ये किस तरीके से हमें जो है इस कोविड नाइन्टीन के पेंडेमिक में अपनी अंडरलाइंग डिजीज को कंट्रोल करना है और स्पेशली डायबिटीज को हमें किस तरीके से मैनेज करना है और और खूस वो लोग जो ऑलरेडी इस बीमारी में मुबतला है उनके कोई फैमिली मेंबर उनके इर्द गिर्द के लोग हैं तो वो किस तरीके से उनको जो है जो उस, उस, उस बारे में आगाही दें और इस बारे में लोगों को जो है बता सकें तो आज का हमारा जो है सेशन इसी इसी हवाले से ही है और और हमारे पास आज दो बहुत रिस्पेक्टेड स्पीकर्स मौजूद हैं जो आज इस तो, इस टॉपिक पर जो है आप आप लोगों से डिस्कस करेंगे और चीज़ों को जो है शेयर करेंगे ताकि आप लोगों को भी जो है इस बारे में अवेयरनेस हो तो हमारे पास आज आज जो हमारी पहली स्पीकर है वो है डॉक्टर उलू डॉक्टर उलूज लाल रहमान शी इज़ एम एम सी पी एस मेडिसन एफ सी पी एस मेडिसन एफ सी पी एस एंडो एस सी ई एंडोक्राइनोलॉजी एंड डायबिटीज फ्राम यू के असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एंडोक्राइनोलॉजी फ्राम जे पी एम सी एंड जे एस एम यू एंड शी इज ऑल्सो अ कंसल्टेंट एट हाशमानी इज हॉस्पिटल तो मैं डॉक्टर उरूज लाल रहमान से रिक्वेस्ट करूँगी कि मैडम आप अपनी प्रजेंटेशन का आगाज कीजिए ताकि हम सब लोगों को जो है पता चले कि किस तरीके से हमें ये कोविड नाइन्टीन के पेंडेमिक में अपने डायबिटीज को जो है मैनेज करना है अस्सलाम वालेकुम जी uh, अस्सलाम वालेकुम थैंक यू वेरी मच सदफ आई फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी फॉर दिस टॉपिक आई एम एज सदफ हैज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड मी ऑलरेडी सो टॉपिक भी की भी थोड़ा सा बजाया है सदफ ने सो इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक डायबिटीज इन कोविड नाइनटीन देर आर टू पेंडेमिक्स गोइंग ऑन एट द सेम टाइम कैन यू ऑल सी माई कैन यू ऑल सी द प्रेजेंटेशन इज इट विजिबल ओके सो लेट्स स्टार्ट टॉकिंग अबाउट इट सो COVID-19, we all know, uh, originated from China, from the Hunan, uh, Hunan seafood market at Wuhan, and the probable cause was bat. And first case was seen on 1st December 2019. So, almost a year gone, <laughs> the COVID-19 has come to our world. So, uh, this is the timeline. So, exposure occurred at Hunan seafood market. first case was in uh, first december 2019 then there was an outbreak in the city of wuhan around 12th december then the first death of the doctor who had talked about it dr lee occurred in 3rd of january 
and then it started spreading around china and 27 nations had confirmed the disease was there till 10th of february february it was 27th february when first case was detected in pakistan in karachi we had first case who was admitted in aqh and then the lockdowns had started in pakistan since then in february that was the time when um, WHO had declared uh, it a pandemic. And to, since then now, the number of confirmed cases world over is 80.8 .8 million, while number of deaths are 1.76 million. And recoveries from COVID-19 is 45.7 million. So we can see within a one year, it has caused a lot of deaths and a lot of patients have suffered because of it. So Pakistan statistics, as we look for this, this is today's update, 29 December, uh, yesterday's update actually. So in Pakistan till uh, 29 December, we had 4,75,000 confirmed cases with 1,776 cases in the last 24 hours. And deaths were around 9,992. These are the total deaths which have occurred because of the disease. And in the last 24 hours, there have been 63 deaths. A lot of patients have recovered as we know that the rate of death mortality is low it's actually the infectivity which is uh, very high in covid so uh, 4 lakh 25 thousand patients almost 26 thousand patients have recovered uh, this, uh, disease and tests are a lot of tests have been done and still critical cases which are um, admitted in different hospitals all over Pakistan is around 2,259, which is a lot of number because having uh, these patients, having admitting one patient in the in, in an isolation means that you lost that bed for the next 14 days. And you don't know that patient might go on ventilator. And this is, uh, that is a lot of uh, burden and a lot of burden, not only on healthcare, but on the society as well, because there are people who have other diseases as well, and they have, are requiring those beds, the ICU beds, but you cannot take them because one patient can take that bed for, for more than 14 days. Sometimes they, they take it for more than a month because it takes time to recover from the disease. So um, just to project that how severe the disease is and how vastly it has spread uh, all over the world and in our country as well. Coming to the second pandemic, diabetes pandemic, which has been here for long. So um, in uh, uh, we go to the IDF, uh, International Diabetes Federation, and we, we look at the statistics of International Diabetes Federation. In 2019, it said that one in 11 adults have diabetes. That is around 463 million people around the world. And uh, over three in four people with diabetes, they live in low and middle income country, countries like our country. So more is in our uh, countries, in third world countries rather than in the affluent countries. 10% of global health expenditure, which is around 760 billion US dollars, which is a lot of money, which is going into treatment of this uh, diabetes. Uh, one in five people with diabetes are above the age of 65 years. So old age people, they have they suffer from it. Uh, the uh, the number of children you can see the adolescents and children is very high. These are the patients having type one diabetes, and then there is 84 percent of patients who have gestational diabetes, leading to hyperglycemia and pregnancy, and so uh, all the complications which can take place in the pregnancy. Um, this is the world uh, map for diabetes by IDF, and it shows exponential rise in diabetes all over the world. Uh, we are the Pakistan is in orange color is included in Middle East and North Africa, and we can see there is a 96 percent exponential increase expected till 2045, which is a lot of number of patients, which is which is a very big jump, jump uh, causing a lot of morbidity and mortality just because of the diabetes. Uh, so number of patients which are with diabetes, uh, this is the Pakistan, its color is red, which is around 10 to 20 million. Uh, 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 when the top 
10 countries were seen. So it was seen that Pakistan was, before 2019, it was at the seventh number. In 2019, it has jumped to the fourth number. So uh, in top 10 countries, Pakistan is at fourth number with the number of the patients suffering from diabetes. And we can see the expenditure which we have for these patients for our health is too low as compared to the number of the patients we have. Deaths, if we say before the age of 60, so uh, again, 40 to 60 percent of younger patients, uh, patients aged less than 60 years, are, have died because of this um, diabetes in our country only. So, what will happen when two pandemics shake hand? So, one is COVID, and then one is diabetes. So, a patient who is a diabetic and gets COVID as well. So what do you expect what will happen? It will be a recipe for disaster. Patients of these disease, uh, who have underlying diabetes have more chances of having the severe disease and have, they have higher mortality. The first study for this was done in France and it was called Coron Coronado, Coronado study. And they saw the coronavirus and diabetes outcome. So the study was done in 53 sites in France and 1,317 patients with diabetes when hospitalized for COVID-19, they were uh, included in the study. The study was just for 10, uh, was for uh, like 20 days, that is 10 to 31st, 31st March. And what they saw that the 65% of patients were male, 70 uh, around mean age was 70 years, 90% of these diabetic patients had type 2 diabetes. Their BMI was 28.4, which means they were overweight. The HbA1c was 8.1, which means it was not controlled. Microvascular complications, that is the neurological, the kidney, they all were infect, uh, affected in 47% of the patients, the retinopathy and everything. The macrovascular compli complications, 41% had those. 57% patient had metformin and insulin therapy was in 38% of the patients. Their uh, primary outcome was whether the patient was going, was dying or was going on ventilator on day seven. And from admission till day seven, the other group was, which was from admission till day seven. And they saw that 29% of the patients achieve the primary out outcome. That is, they went on ventilator on day seven or died on day seven. While 10.6% of these patients were the patients who died within the tenth, uh, within the seven day. So they could not survive till the day of, uh, till seventh day of admission. So this was the first study of COVID-19 patients with diabetes and shows that 10% die within seven days of hospital admission and two third are men. Presence of diabetic complications, microvascular, macrovascular, and increasing age increases the risk of death. By day seven, one in five, that is 20.3% had been intubated and placed on ventilator intensive care. And one in 10 had died. This is a very grave kind of a picture. This is less number of patients, just 1,000 patients and 10% of 1,000. So we have now, we have millions of patients. So 10% of millions is too much. Of these millions, we have diabetics, majority are diabetics, so 10% of these is too much. So what is the mechanism? Why this is happening? Why COVID-19 has such a bad effect on patients who already have diabetes? The reason is there's higher affinity, cellular binding, and efficient virus entry. So virus can easily enter in these patients, in the cells. There's the cells don't have the capability to clear these viruses. They have the capability to clear the virus is decreased in patients. There is diminished T cell function and there's increased susceptibility of hyperinflation and cytokine storm. So, you know, diabetic patients are already at a level of, you know, they have a, a, a low grade inflammation going on. So already inflammation chal rahi hai. Uske upar jab infection hoga or cytokine storm hoga. So that will be a much, much bigger, uh, exponentially uh, larger storm as compared to in patients who don't have an underlying hyperinflation going on. And then presence of cardiovascular disease is also one of the factors. Diabetes, uh, we have also found out that COVID-19 causes thromboembolism. 
and thrombotic phenomena. And diabetes itself is a thrombotic state. Patients with diabetes, all, all of them, they are in a thrombotic state. So again, that aggravates the effect on the body. Then it, one more thing was observed that <clears throat> patients who had COVID-19, they also, there was a question of new onset diabetes in patients. The patients who were admitted and found to be diabetic after being admitted in the hospital or the patients, younger patients who had come with DKA for the first time and they found they were found to have type 1 diabetes. There were two multi-center studies. One was done in UK and one was done in US and they found that new onset type 1 diabetes was, in, uh, was seen in the, these patients. So an additional 12 to 15 new type 1 diabetes cases excuse me uh, sorry an additional 12 to 15 new type 1 diabetes cases during the covid 19 pandemic that was an 80 80 percent increase and coronado study also stated that three percent of cases were actually diagnosed with diabetes during hospitalization so were the new concept or were there pre-diabetics whose diabetes uh, was um, you know uh, became uh, was detected when they were admitted or or went uh, the sugar levels went out of, out of control because of the COVID-19 or because of the treatment it was being given to them the steroids we give high dose of steroids to these patients so that might have also been the reason for the new uh, onset or for the unwilling of the diabetes in these patients a very complex kind of a <coughs> chart uh, which uh, talks about that how COVID-2 can cause, or COVID-19, sorry, SARS-CoV-2 is also uh, the other name of COVID-19. So how does this can cause a new onset, a new form of the diabetes or type 1 diabetes? So very first thing is the lockdown. So lockdown happens, stop exercising, people stopped going outside, they started eating when there was complete lockdown. So that in turn, all those who were pre-diabetics, their sugar levels started going up. This lockdown, all this also, this unhealthy activity, this unhealthy lifestyle also led to increase in pro-inflammatory cytokines and acute phase reactants. Not only this, but COVID itself can cause the increase in the inflammatory cytokines and acute phase reactants. This all causes, in turn, Reached, re resulted in impaired insulin signaling, causing glycogenolysis to break down excessive breakdown of the glucose from the liver and the muscles, and lipogenesis, uh, increased formation of the fat, which in turn led to the type 2 or new form of the diabetes. Number two, number three is autoimmunity. Just like any other virus, just like any other virus, there is after exposure, there is chances of development of um, autoimmunity. Your autoimmune system gets active. So with COVID-19, it, COVID it is considered that some kind of autoimmunity took place, which caused the destruction of the beta cells. Third thing, fourth, but very important, not still being uh, investigated, is the process of direct destruction of the beta cells because of the COVID-19. The COVID-19 enters the cells by means of specific receptors, ACE2 receptors, ACE2 receptors. And these receptors are present abundantly in the beta cells of the pancreas. So when they are and they enter the pancreas, the beta cells through these receptors, they cause the destruction of the beta cells. So COVID itself can cause the destruction of the beta cells, leading to the type 1 diabetes and the duration of the type 2 diabetes. So how to manage diabetes in COVID-19 patients? So this means we have to be very vigilant about management of diabetes in these patients to prevent any bad outcomes, to prevent them from having the disease in the first place. So outpatient care is very important. So first and foremost thing which we have to talk about is prevention of infection diabetes. So all those diabetic patients, they have to be taught that they have to, to take measures to prevent any kind of infection, especially the COVID-19 infection. They have to be very, very careful. So you have to sensitize the patient with diabetes 
for importance of optimal metabolic control. So they have to control their sugars. They have to take their therapy properly. Uh, this, they should not discontinue their therapy. They should keep in touch with their healthcare worker. And all those uh, uh, precautions which we tell uh, everyone that should be doubly uh, um, pressurized or should be uh, taught all the time to these diabetic patients. So wash your hands and try avoid your touching your face and clean and disinfect objects. Do not share food and glass and towels and tools. Do not share your stuff with anyone. Um, when you cough or sneeze, so use the uh, elbow of the pit uh, for the elbow for the um, crook of your arm for, for the uh, coughing, sneezing. Try to avoid contact with people with coughing and think whether you really, if you're going somewhere, think whether you really want to go. Is it really important? These, this has, this is precautions which have been told for everyone, but for diabetic patients, it is more important. It is more important and they should be more, this should be more um, told to them more, they should be more pressurized about these things. And they should be uh, talked about, this should be talked to them every time when they're coming to the clinic or every time they are talk, uh, consulting uh, the doctor, they should be, this should be talked to them. Again, nutrition, their nutrition, uh, get priority to food with a low glycemic index like vegetables, and avoid excessive consumption of fried foods, limitations of food high in sugar, carbohydrate, and fat. Choose lean proteins. Eat green leafy vegetables. Eat fruits in two or three, seven. For he, this is the same thing which we tell the diabetic patients. It's no different. But we have to be more, uh, more. We have to more uh, talk more about it in patients to prevent them from having COVID-19. Keep in prospect of COVID-19. This has to be talked more frequently to them. So lockdown leads to decreased activity. So make sure to advise patients on importance of physical activity and exercise, which can be done at home. So if a patient suppose gets the COVID and you are admitting the patient, so he can be in a ward or he can be in intensive care. He can be, he or she might be admitted for DKA or hyperosmolar state or because of the shock. So in all these cases, you have to ask the patient about your plasma glucose monitoring. You have to do plasma glucose monitoring, electrolytes, pH, blood ketones, or beta hydroxybutyrate. Liberal induction for early intervention. So think about starting IV insulin therapy in severe cases. Don't wait. Just start it because insulin is the best treatment for these patients. And if patient is in hyperinflammation or ARDS, then the issues of subcutaneous re uh, absorption or absorption of the drugs can be there. So to prevent that, just start the patient if on early intravenous insulin therapy. Therapeutic aims are <clears throat> glucose concentration. The aims are almost the same. 72, 72 to 144 milligram per DL for the ward patients, 72 to 180 milligram per DL for ICU intensive care patients. In lower target, like 90 milligram, uh, starting from 90 milligram, can be considered in patients who are frail. And HbA1c, 7%. The, almost the aims, the therapeutic aims are the same. They are not different. I'm sorry for the <coughs> disturbance. So, um, Concentration. Uh, now we come to the medical therapy, the drugs which we can give in the medical, the diabetic drugs which we can give to these patients, which drugs and which drugs should not be given to these patients. So unless a patient has not developed the, you know, uh, COVID-19, all the medications which the patient is taking should be taken and he should, should adhere to, to his, his or her medications. Once he, develop, he or she develops the COVID-19, then we have to be very careful. So the very important drug is metformin. The first line drug given to all these patients has to be, uh, it has to be stopped okay? because of the dehydration and lactic acidosis. So if, because these patients get dehydrated, so it is pe better to stop it. And during illness, we have to look at the renal functions. They should be monitored carefully because of the high risk of chronic kidney disease or ac acute kidney injury. So metformin has to be stopped. SGLT2s, the canaglyphosin, dapaglyphosin, and empaglyphosin. Again, there's risk of re dehydration, diabetic ketoacidosis. During the illness, sure, it should be avoided uh, in the in 
it should be avoided. We should we should stop this medication in this patients, and it should be avoided in. Well, you should not be starting this treatment for the first time, especially if the patient is complaining of respiratory illness. So he has come and he has COVID and you find out that he is diabetic as well. So you do not start the SGLT2s. You think of the other medications. Renal function should be carefully monitored for acute kidney injury. GLP-1 receptor agonist, dulaglutide, albiglutide, exanatide, extended release, liraglutide, lixisanatide, and semaglutide. Of all these, we have liraglutide available. And uh, dehydration again can occur. And because these were drugs also causes nausea, anorexia, and the patients are al already nauseous and anorexic and have GI complications. So better to avoid this medication. Adequate fluid intake, otherwise, if they are taking this, then advise adequate fluid intake and regular meals. They should be encouraged. Okay, DPP-4 inhibitors, alogliptin, linagliptin, sexagliptin, and cetagliptin. These are the drugs which can be tolerated and can be continued in these patients. You don't need to, to stop them. There is also a, a hypothesis that these drugs might also help in prevention or in uh, uh, prevention of severe disease of the COVID. So they can help in controlling the uh, COVID disease as well. So why, how, because hmm, we know about, about the MERS, that MERS can bind to DPP-4 um, receptors. And while when they bind to DPP-4 receptor, uh, so it is postulated that just like MERS, because COVID is a sister of MERS, so it is considered that just like COVID, uh, MERS, the COVID can also bind to the DPP-4 receptor. And thus, if it activates, it causes the cleavage of GLP-1, which increases type, type 2 diabetes, and then it also causes upregulation of the immune cells. So DPP-4 inhibitors, if are taken, then this cleavage doesn't take place, and this upregulation of immune cells doesn't take place. This is a postulation, and that's why it is being preferred drug. It is a preferred drug in patients who have diabetes and mild COVID. So you can ship these patients to uh, DPP-4 for the control of their disease. Insulin therapy, if they are insulin therapy, it should not be stopped. Regular self-monitoring of blood glucose every two to four hours should be encouraged or continuous glucose monitoring should be done. Carefully adjust regular therapy if appropriate to reach therapeutic goals according to the diabetes type comorbidities and health status. So insulin therapy is the best therapy. So if they are on insulin, you do not need to stop it. If they are coming to the hospital and getting admitted and have severe disease or moderate disease and you're planning to start on steroids and everything, put them on insulin. If the sugars are very high and if uh, again the disease is high, better to put on the IV insulin. So insulin is the drug is the drug of choice for these patients. So when we do the diabetes, when we talk about diabetes, so patients of diabetes, they have other comorbids as well. And it has been seen that underlying, when we look at underlying conditions of all adults hospitalized with COVID-19, we can see the their hypertension, obesity, lung diseases, cardiovascular diseases, and diabetes all were present in these patients. So if you have, if a patient has diabetes, chances are very high that he will ha he or she has hypertension or a cardiovascular disease and obesity so these treatment so while considering treatment of these patients for diabetes we also need to consider the treatment for hypertension obesity cardiovascular disease dyslipidemias the treatments which were given for these should be continued for them and there are studies which have shown their effect on COVID-19 whether they are good or bad so first of them is ACE inhibitors ACE inhibitors are the drugs which which are going to control the blood pressure of the patient which is going to control the diabetic nephropathy and is also help, uh, main drug used for the cardiovascular disease initially in the beginning uh, during in, around March or something uh, there was a study which came in Lancet and they had said that uh, ACE inhibitors are not good for patients and it can lead to deterioration and severe COVID disease. But then the studies were done. The reason for them saying that was that the COVID-19, because of its spikes, it binds to the ACE2 receptors. And then 
these they go inside the cell, they enter the cell by help of these AC2 receptors. And as they go inside, they are responsible for um, down regulation of the AC2. Now, what AC2 does actually, what happens is angiotensin is converted to angi uh, angiotensin 1, which by means of ACE is converted to angiotensin 2. And AC2 receptors are responsible for conversion of angiotensin 2 to ang 17 and ang 19. So it is actually responsible for breakdown of the angiotensin 2. Now, <clears throat> so if ACE, so the postulation was that if ACE2 is not there, it will lead to higher levels of the angiotensin 2. So that if the levels of angiotensin 2 are very high, this can lead to the thrombosis and vasoconstriction and cardiac fibrosis. So that was the reason. But when they, these drugs were studied and followed, they, it was seen that, not, that when an ACE inhibitors, they will result in no form, not only uh, are helpful, but it levels of the angiotensin 2. And ARBs, they causes the blockage of the receptors. So as they cause the blockage of the receptors and as the angiotensin 2 levels are reduced because of the ACE inhibitors, now it is recommended to continue and to add ACE inhibitors to patients who have hypertension, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. This view is endorsed by a recent position statement from the Euro European Society of Cardiology and the Heart Failure Society of America, American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association. So all the heart associations all over the world have endorsed that ACE inhibitors have to be continued. Statins. So statins are very important for the control of dyslipidemia, a very important component of diabetes, and also uh, leading to thrombosis. And we know that SARS or COVID-19 also causes thrombosis. So it's, studies were done to find out whether statin is useful and should it be continued or should be stopped in these patients. And it was seen that as statins decreases the level of the cholesterol in the cell membrane, and this cholesterol is required by the ACE2 receptors for binding of the virus. So if the cholesterol is not there, no binding will take place. No binding, no engulfing of the COVID. COVID cannot enter the cell. So not it will not enter the endothelial cells or epithelial cells. Number two, it also affects the leukocytes. So the receptors of the leukocytes are also if inhibited, which results in decreased inflammatory cytokines. Also on platelets and increases the uh, prothrombotic, decreases the incidence of prothrombotic state. And a study was done which showed that the death rate was 5.2% matched statin in matched statin users as compared to 9.4% in matched statin non-users. So coming to the end, COVID-19 risk and severity increases if there is underlying disease, especially diabetes. The precautions are the same, but one has to be vigilant. Metformin and SGLT2 may be stopped in severe disease. GPP-4 inhibitors, ACE inhibitors, and statins have prote protective roles. Insulin should not be discontinued, and the best option in severe diseases presenting with shock or septicemia. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Keep on wearing your masks and keep on washing your hands with the soap. Thank you so much. Over to you, Sadaf. Thank you so much, Dr. Uruj Lal. So it was a wonderful presentation. Or Umi de ke jo log hume sun rahe, jo log hume yahan par Zoom par aur jo live hume Facebook par par jin logon ne hume join kiye kiya hua hai, un logon ko aaj bahut zada jo information hasil hui hogi ki kis tarike se hume is COVID-19 ke pandemic mein hume apni diabetes ko manage karna hai. Especially जो जो लोग पहले से ही इसमें इस बीमारी में मुब्तला हैं, उनको किस तरीके से जो है अपनी डाइट को लेकर चलना है, और जो हमारे पास जो पास जो COVID-19 की SOPs हैं, उनको भी हमें जो है इसमें जो है उसको maintain करते हुए कि तमाम लोगों को देखो अब इसमें देखें हैं एक चीज ये भी ये भी important है कि आप चाहे किसी बीमारी में अगर किसी को ऐसी 
डिजीज में में मुबतला नहीं भी है तो भी आपको उन तमाम एस को फॉलो करना है लेकिन अगर आप ऐसी किसी को मोरबिट या अंडरलाइन डिजीज में इन्वॉल्व हैं और आपको ऐसी कोई ना कोई कोई बीमारी है तो उसमें आपको ज्यादा आपको अपने अपने हिफा, अपने हिफाजत के लिए अपने अपनी उस उस बीमारी को जो है ओवरकम करने के लिए और आप ज्यादा उससे जो है मुतासर नहीं हो सके तो आपको ज्यादा इसमें जो है एहतियात की जरूरत है तो किस तरीके से हमें अपनी डाइट को मैनेज करना है किस तरीके से लेकर चलना है तो अब बहुत कुछ हमें जो है आपकी इसमें जो है लोगों को जो है उसको सीखने का मौका मिला है हमारे नेक्स्ट स्पीकर हैं डॉक्टर मोहम्मद जफर इकबाल साहब ही इज़ एम बी बी एस डी आई पी इन डायबिटीज पी जी एच ए एंड एम एम एस सी आर सी पी ही इज एफिलेटेड विद बकाई इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ डायबिटोलॉजी एंड एंड्रोक्राइनोलॉजी एज अ जनरल सेक्रेटरी ऑफ हेल्थ इंफॉर्मेशन हेल्थ हेल्थ प्रोमोशन फाउंडेशन सर प्लीज अपने आप अपने जो है उसका लेक्चर का आगाज कीजिए और और आज इनका जो टॉपिक है डॉक्टर जफर इकबाल का ही विल डिस्कस अबाउट इंटरेक्शन बिटवीन कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड डायबिटीज के किस तरीके से जो है क्या इंटरलिंक होता है जो डायबिटिक के पेशेंट्स होते हैं और उनको फिर किस तरीके से जो है आपको जो है को रिलेट करना है और फिर उस बीमारी से आपको ओवरकम over, करना है ओवर टू डॉक्टर जफर इकबाल साहब अस्सलाम वालेकुम थैंक यू डॉक्टर सदर uh for inviting me for in this uh very very uh, important topic because uh, more we talk about it uh, uh, more we have a good firm belief and we uh, go, are going to own it uh, once we own it only then we react to uh, or take the all the precautions right so uh, dr ruj has made my job very easier because all all uh, aspects she has covered very um, brilliantly and very um, thoroughly uh, about uh, starting with the covid in pakistan um, uh, this morning they say that uh, about active cases are 37080 and uh, deaths are more than 10000 again uh, i agree that this is this is a very um, uh, serious and very alarming situation when this is coupled with uh, uh, another pandemic which is diabetic uh, according to the idf diabetes atlas atlas 9th edition uh, pakistan's position is fourth uh, among the high ranks people who are in countries which are um, having a high number of the uh, diabetic patients 26.2 uh, million people in pakistan diabetes potential risk to develop covid 19 um, as very rightly mentioned that those who are suffering from hypertension or severe obesity chronic lung disease diabetes itself or the cardiovascular disease age above 65 years and immuno compromised patients they are more vulnerable to uh, develop covid or the seriousness of the serious situation of the covid co morbidities are present in almost 90% of the covid 19 admissions in hospitals and diabetes is associated with severity and mortality in patients with covid 19 uh, one has to take very care of uh, uh, if it has developed uh, and it's been from who they have, they mentioned that 88% of the people have developed fever 33% mucus production 68% dry cough and 19% shortness of breath 38% developed fatigue 15% sore throat and mus- uh, 15% muscle pain uh, there can be combination there can be uh, just one or a uh, uh, very mild one that so, uh, somebody has not taken um, notice of it but with passage of time uh, it becomes serious 
uh, one thing also covid nodules one one should also um, be aware of it and if it uh, god forbid if it happens then uh, it should be uh, investigated um, with the same risk interaction between covid and nine and diabetes that diabetes may accentuate covid and covid further deteriorates uh, diabetes so coronavirus infections lead to the damage of lung while imbalanced and excessive immune responses may cause pneumonia usually the uh, uh, development of the um uh, seriousness of the uh, of the covid is so fast that uh, uh, sometimes it's a matter of 3 days when it becomes really potentially um, uh, hazardous diabetes may accentuate covid high level of il6 or tnfa and other inflammatory cytokines are ex expressed in diabetic patients uh, serum animal models suggest that diabetic significantly promoted the production of toll like uh, receptors 4 il6 were associated with the death of covid patients and overall speculation is that over activation of tlr4 may continue contribute to the severity of the disease or even death possible reasons for increased risk of infections in diabetes long term sub optimal glycemic control may impair immune response to viral infection diabetic complications further increase the severity of covid-19 neutrophil dysfunction reduced t cells response and disorder humoral immunity are contributing factors at increased increased risk of severe infection because of the increased cytokines about the diagnosis of the covid-19 some people uh, always uh, uh, even with the uh, similar um, uh, uh, development of the symptoms uh, they they are little bit reluctant uh, whether to go for the test which is definitely uh, uh, um, the first step for um, the safety of the patient pcr rtpsr and ct scans are significant for the diagnosis of covid and these ct ct scans they should be uh, taken care of or, or if when whenever they are indicated coming back to diabetes there the component of the diabetes management uh, nutritional management physical activity medication sufficient supply at hand glucose monitoring psychosocial adjustment and use of telemedicines these are really required if someone want has to have uh, to prevent uh, development of the complications diabetes uh, salient features are high prevalence of diabetes is seen in patients with covid-19 and diabetes is a determinant of severity and mortality inflammation hypercoagulation impaired immunity may increase morbidity and mortality hypoglycemic events may occur with chloroquine use in people with diabetes and covid-19 as was the very first drug uh, most rec recommended on social media also about the self management because one is uh, uh, at uh, staying at home so he should have more chances and more more time to understand the impact of the factors uh, such as food intake on its uh, glucose level the uh, impact of the exercise impact of the stress and um, what does the medication do on as far as blood glucose are concerned uh, able to make appropriate adjustment to maintain glucose within a target level more aware and uh, more empowered with the um, uh, the available solutions they will be uh, more at uh, control of uh, his diabetes Pre periodic diabetes uh, education is must only clinics should be arranged to, um, online clinics uh, should be arranged for diabetes care team ideally consisting of 
diabetologist, certified diabetes educator, nutritionist, exercise physiologist, and psychiatrist. So to have a good idea of what is diabetes, one should be able to know and identify the risks, how to confirm the diagnosis, management, as far as the um, convention triad of diet, exercise, and medicine is concerned, must have, have a good knowledge of the complications, early recognition, in fact, and above all, continuous monitoring. If this um, SMBG is required on a daily basis. Now, the awareness of the uh, microvascular complications like neuropathy, retinopathy, and nephropathy, as well as the macrovascular complications, coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, peripheral vascular disease, the, uh, the diabetic foot, this, this will help the person to uh, seek the medical advice and to contact their, uh, their doctors. Diabetic neuropathy, damage to the nerves, 50% of diabetics suffer from neuropathy, rarely develop prior to five years of disease, high, highest incidence in diabetic over 25 years of disease. So diabetic nephropathy, 20 to 40% of all diabetic and diabetic patients develop nephropathy. Worldwide, this is the most frequent cause of end stage disease. Diabetic retinopathy is a complication of the eye. It affects the retina, innermost layer of the eye. It is a leading cause of blindness in diabetic individuals. During the first two decades of our disease, nearly all patients with type 1 diabetes and uh, 60, more than 60% of patients with type 2 diabetes have retinopathy. And this is what happens a normal vision and uh, uh, with uh, after the development of the retinopathy. Diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is a leading cause of death in diabetes. Diabetics are a two to fourfold increased risk of coronary artery disease. Two out of three people with diabetes die from heart disease and stroke. Actually, the Atherosclerosis is the main culprit in the, in the development of the whole mechanism. So stroke, reduced blood supply to the brain due to atherosclerosis and rupture of blood vessels, uh, develop, for example, brain aneurysm. Uh, once someone has accepted the, or even diagnosed during this pandemic, that he, he has developed the symptoms of the diabetes and knowing that has gone through the uh, standard, um, gold standard of the uh, diagnosis that is uh, oral glucose tolerance test. So management means the lifestyle modification, appropriate diet, suitable exercise program, and cessation of smoking and alcohol. All these Four components are very important, uh, though during this pandemic of COVID, it has become more, the task become more and more uh, uphill and it's really very difficult to take care of them. But the, uh, all the management decision cycle of the patient center for glycemic management and type two is, the, is, is the, the focused on the goal of uh, preventing complications and optimize uh, quality of life. To prevent the, uh, this um, um, complete development of the country, uh, complications or delaying the development of the uh, complications, the consideration of the management will be that one should enhance self-management. It should support health, supportive health services must be available and public health measures need to be observed. Like wearing masks and uh, uh, maintaining social distancing. Diet and exercise, as uh, Dr. Ruj already mentioned, that the, the physical activity uh, which can be exercised at home should be more encouraged and practiced during that period. About the diet, it should be a balanced one um, from all, um, all the groups of the um, uh, food groups. 
and uh, the top, top of the list the adjective will be that uh, uh, the quantity of the um, uh, food should be uh, as um, uh, uh, adequate as possible so that the blood glucose level uh, uh, should uh, should be kept in, uh, within that range at home uh, one should manage all unresolved tasks fix some targets on daily basis at home or reading writing or painting or make do some uh, house cleaning every day so that the a, a, a working of uh, uh, the whole body or the management to uh, to keep the blood sugar level at the um, required range will become easy about hypoglycemia strategies should be developed to uh, to limit the effect of hypoglycemia recognition and risk reduction is important about the pharmacological management uh, oral hypoglycemic agents insulin antihypertensive antiplatelet agents and lipid lowering agents metformin in case of dehydration and lactic acidosis patient should stop the drug and follow sick day rule especially after the confirmation of uh, uh, covid positive if they are covid positive monitoring of renal function is mandatory about uh, glp1 uh, monitoring for uh, dehydration and adequate fluid intake and regular meals should be encouraged about dpp4 uh, as uh, very rightly mentioned initially it was the continuation is not preferred but now uh, dpp4 is um, recommended to continue or even they that that can be used to start the the treatment about insulin the gold gold uh, uh, treatment uh, insulin therapy should be continued regular self monitoring of blood glucose or continuous glucose monitoring regular therapy should be adjusted according to the type of diabetes comorbidities and health status and telemedicine should be used to continue regular reviews and self management education program virtually and in the last i would like to also emphasize on the potential effects of the treatment given for covid uh, to block the cytokine storm the use of the corticosteroids lead to hyperglycemia of uh, an effect on the glucose profile which should which requires further uh, attention and focus so that the um, blood sugar level should be kept in a, in a in a range where uh, the delay of the um, de development of the complications uh, can be achieved like uh, lupinar uh, lipodystrophy and hyperglycemia is the effect with uh, uh, ranovir uh, again lipodystrophy and hyperglycemia uh, in pakistan uh, though very very uh, brief experience but the uh, 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 use of remdesivir Uh, has really um, given a very good support uh, as far as the covid is concerned the uh, phase of the ac acute phase got reduced and uh, um, the patients had re recovered uh, uh, fast but it also causes increased blood glucose seen in 7% of the patients in remdesivir versus 8% in placebo group interferon beta 1 um, uh, they also can lead to autoimmune beta cell damage thereby precipitating or worsening diabetes mellitus uh, initially uh, chloroquine was used and that improves glucose profile and uh, um, uh, risk of uh, azithro azithromycin risk of uh, dysglycemia uh, and in people with
थैंक यू डॉक्टर जफर इकबाल फॉर दिस वंडरफुल प्रेजेंटेशन कि हमें लोग आज लोगों ने कोविड नाइन्टीन के पेंडेमिक में किस तरीके से हमें डायबिटीज़ को मैनेज करना है किस तरीके से हमें जो है इसको मोरबिड डिजीज़ के साथ अपनी को, अपनी कोविड नाइन्टीन को जो है उसे हमें जो है फाइट करना है तो लोगों ने आज इस, इस बारे में काफ़ी ज़्यादा अवेयरनेस हासिल की होगी अच्छा हमारे पास अभी कुछ जो है क्वेश्चंस भी आए अच्छा जो लोग हमें हाशमानी ग्रुप ऑफ हॉस्पिटल के लाइव फेसबुक पेज पर हमें देख रहे हैं सुन रहे हैं अगर उनके जहन में कोई सवाल है जो हम डॉक्टर उरूज से डॉक्टर जफर इकबाल से से डिस्कस करना चाहते हैं तो प्लीज़ आप हमें अपने वहाँ पर क्वेश्चन लिख कर भेजिए ताकि हम फिर अपने पैनलिस्ट से उस आपके क्वेश्चन को शेयर कर सकें अभी जो सर हमारे पास जो कुछ सवाल आए तो वो मैं आप लोग के साथ शेयर शेयर करना चाहूँगी ताकि आप लोग उस क्वेश्चन के जवाब आ दे दें तो सबसे पहला सवाल है कि मेरे पास आए कि व्हाट आर द वार्निंग साइन एंड सिम्टम्स दैट समवन है ब्लड शुगर्स आर टू हाई और टू लो तो उनमें uh, uh, से कोई भी अगर इसका अगर डॉक्टर जो है डॉक्टर उर्दू uh, अगर आप इसका जवाब देना चाहें सो वार्निंग साइंस तो वही है ना आपके पॉलीफेक ज्यादा पानी पीना ज्यादा यूरिन करना ज्यादा भूख लगना वजन का कम होना वजन का ज्यादा हो जाना ठीक है इन्फेक्शन बहुत ज्यादा होना ठीक है फंगल इन्फेक्शन होना रिकरेंट इन्फेक्शन होना करंट बुखार रहना ये सारी चीजें हैं जिसम में दर्द रहना ये जो कि डायबिटीज की हाई शुगर के साथ यही होगा लो शुगर के साथ चक्कर आना पसीना आना घबराहट होना बेहोश हो जाना उल्टी सीधी बातें करते हुए या बात काम नहीं कर पाना ये सारी चीजें जो हैं फिर वो लो शुगर के साथ हैं जो कि होती ये सिम्टम्स होते हैं और सर अगर कुछ और ऐड करना चाहें अगर आप इस पे कुछ अगर वो ये थी क्वेश्चन पूछने वाला ये पूछना चाह रहा था कि विच वन इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट अगर ऐसी बात है तो भाई दोनों ही इम्पोर्टेंट है हाइपोग्लाइसिमिया शुड बी टेकन मोर केयर ऑफ राधर देन दाइपर ग्लाइसिमिया बिकॉज दैट इज मोर हेजार थैंक यू अच्छा हमारा नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन है व्हाट आर द लॉन्ग लॉन्ग टर्म कॉम्प्लिकेशंस ऑफ डायबिटीज एंड हाउ कैन समवन अवॉइड दैम लॉन्ग टर्म लॉन्ग टर्म कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ डायबिटीज क्या कुछ काफी अर्से अगर किसी को डायबिटीज है तो उसकी फर्दर आगे जाकर कौन सी किस तरह की जो है कॉम्प्लिकेशन को वो फेस कर सकता है माइक्रोवेस्कुलर कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड जिसमें अगर वो ब्रेन इन्वॉल्व है तो स्ट्रोक फालिश हो गया अगर हार्ट uh, इन्वॉल्व है तो हार्ट अटैक हो गया कार्डियोमायोपैथी डेवलप हुई अगर पेरिफरल आर्टरीज इन्वॉल्व हैं तो डायबिटिक फुट हुआ फुट गैंग्रीन हुआ और वो उसको बाद में डायबिटिक फुट को मैनेज करना इट सेल्फ इज आज आर्डस ये तो अगर बड़ी खून की नालियां इन्वॉल्व हैं लेकिन शुरू में ही शुरू के पीरियड मई फाइव में अगर माइक्रोवेस्कुल uh, कॉम्प्लिकेशन है तो जो कि सिम्टम भी है अक्सर फेस uh, टू में क्या नाम है एट द टाइम ऑफ द डायग्नोसिस वो ब्लरिंग ऑफ विशन की बात कर रहा होता है और जब आप फंडोस्कोपी करते हो तो आप हैरान रह जाते हो कि उसने ऑलरेडी रेटिनोपैथी डेवलप कर लिया द रीजन व्हाई वी फोकस फॉर दी दीज प्री डायबिटिक पीपल दोज हु आर नॉट डायबिटिक एट प्रेजेंट बट दे हैव डेवलप द सेम कॉम्प्लिकेशन एंड दे आर प्रोन टू डेवलप दायबिटिक कॉम्प्लिकेशन मोर विद सेम प्रोबेबिलिटी तो वो चाहे वो न्यूरोपैथी डेवलप किया उसने और उसको भी बिल्कुल उसके पाँव में उसको सेंसेशन नहीं हो रही या नेफ्रोपैथी डेवलप किया जो कि रिवर्सेबल भी है अगर आप एनियम करते हो लेकिन इन तमाम चीज़ों के लिए जो सबसे अहम बात है वो है कि ब्लड शुगर लेवल शुड बी कैप्ट विद इन नॉर्मल रेंज ब्रेकफास्ट के फास्टिंग ब्लड शुगर लेस देन हंड्रेड मिलीग्राम पर डे सी लीटर और इन रैंडम लेस देन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी मिलीग्राम पर डे सी लीटर अगर फिफ्टी ईयर्स से ज्यादा की एज है और आप एक रिलैक्सेशन भी देते हैं तो फास्टिंग शुड नॉट बी मोर देन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी मिलीग्राम पर डे सी लीटर और रैंडम हंड्रेड एंड एट्टी मिलीग्राम पर डे सी आसान बात नहीं है हमारे लिए कहना आसान होता है जो कर रहा होता है उसके लिए आसान नहीं होता लेकिन बहुत ज्यादा रिकमेंडेशन है कि आप एच बी एवं का कहीं इंतजार ना 
करें एस एम बी जी की इम्पोर्टेंस बहुत ज्यादा है और वो उसको अपने ये शुगर को न सिर्फ चेक करना चाहिए रिकॉर्ड रखना चाहिए बल्कि आप ऑनलाइन क्लिनिक्स में आप वो शेयर कर सकते हैं अपने डॉक्टर से और उससे उससे एडवाइस ले सकते हैं सो वेरी राइट सर ने बड़ा अच्छा बताया एक चीज जो वी शुड बी टेलिंग आर पेशेंट इज कि जो शुगर है ना ये दीमक है आपके जिसम की सो so, जैसे दीमक लकड़ी खा जाती है इसी तरह से शुगर आपके जिसम को खा जाता है और वो स्किन uh, है आंखें हैं गुर्दे हैं दिमाग है दिल है जिगर जो भी आजा है आपके वो सारे इन्फेक्ट हो सकते हैं और वो सारे अफेक्ट हो सकते हैं सॉरी और उसकी वजह से उनकी उनमें ये सारी कॉम्प्लिकेशंस हो सकती हैं सो फॉलेज से लेके पैर कटने तक ये सब कुछ इंक्लूडेड है एक सिर्फ डायबिटीज और ट्रीटमेंट सब चीजों की कंट्रोल है डायबिटीज का शुगर कंट्रोल की तो ये चीजें अच्छा ये चीजें होती हैं ये नहीं है कि ये बिल्कुल खत्म हो जाएंगी लेकिन उनका जिस रेट से होना है जिस तेजी से वो हो रही होती है हाई शुगर से जब आप कंट्रोल करते हैं तो वो उस तेजी से नहीं होती जिस कॉम्प्लिकेशन ने तीन साल में हो जाना है अगर शुगर आपकी कंट्रोल नहीं है वो कॉम्प्लिकेशन दस साल लेगी अगर आपकी शुगर कंट्रोल है सो so, आपकी लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी और आपकी कॉम्प्लिकेशन का ड्यूरेशन जो है जो होने का वो बढ़ जाता है सो मैनेजमेंट जो है सारी सब की वो है आपका शुगर का कंट्रोल होना टारगेट सर ने बता दिया आपको सो ये इम्पोर्टेंट है सबसे ज्यादा थैंक यू डॉक्टर रूज और डॉक्टर जफर अच्छा हमारे पास एक और क्वेश्चन है हमारे के सुनने वाले हैं जो और जो हमें इस वक्त लाइव देख भी रहे हैं मिस्टर आमिर आजम उनका ये सवाल है कि शेल वी नीड टू एडजस्ट इंसोलिन डोजेज इन कोविड नाइन्टीन पेशेंट्स और वी कैन कंटिन्यू इंसोलिन एज एन नॉर्मल कंडीशन ऑफकोर्स यू विल नीड टू एडजस्ट द डोज ऑफ इंसोलिन ठीक है डिपेंडिंग के आप क्या क्या सिचुएशन चल रही है सो so, कुछ पेशेंट्स जो हैं वो एनोरेक्सिक हो जाते हैं उनको नोजिया हो रहा होता है उनको डायरिया होता है उनको वोमिटिंग हो रही होती है तो उनकी शुगर लेवल्स जो हैं आपको उनके लिए इंसुलिन थोड़ी कम करनी पड़ सकती है क्योंकि उनको हाइपोज हो सकते हैं आपकी उस डोज पे अगर वो खा ही नहीं रहे तो आप उसको हाई डोज इंसुलिन देंगे तो प्रॉब्लम होगी लेकिन ज्यादातर चांसेस ये है कि चूंकि इन्फ्लेमेशन हो रही है अंदर इतना ज्यादा और फिर आप स्टीरोइड भी एड कर रहे हैं और मेडिकेशन दे रहे हैं जो कि उसको जैसे एजोमैक्स बहुत दी जा रही है जिथ्रोमाइसिन और जैसे सो उससे उसका कंट्रोल खराब होगा सो यू वाइट नीड टू इंक्रीज द डोज यूजली यू नीड टू इंक्रीज जो सिक डे रूल होता है ना कि आपने अपनी शुगर्स फ्रीक्वेंटली मॉनिटर करनी है आपको डोज अपनी बढ़ानी होती है सो so, uh, वो जो डोज जिस पे वो कंट्रोल था वो डोज उसको शायद नहीं चाहिए होगी उससे ज्यादा चाहिए होगी या फिर कुछ बहुत कम लोगों में जिनमें डायरिया वायरिया उनमें आपको शायद कम करनी पड़े ठीक है और फिर ये भी हो सकता है कि वो इतनी अनकंट्रोल्ड हो कि एडमिशन हो अक्यूट कॉम्प्लिकेशन डी के या एच में जा रहा हो और फिर वो आई इंसुलिन भी उसको देनी पड़ सके सो so, ये कंट्रोल देखना सीजीएम करना या एस आपकी शुगर मॉनिटरिंग बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है इसमें और डोज एडजस्टमेंट होना बहुत जरूरी है सर अगर आप इस बारे में कुछ जी मैं ये ऐड करना चाहूंगा कि ये जो डोज की जो बात हो रही है ना ये डोज एडजस्टमेंट बेस करते हैं कि उसने बाकी दो चीजों का क्या ख्याल किया देखिए हर दफा मैनेजमेंट जो है ना वो सिर्फ मेडिसिन पे नहीं रहेगी डाइट एंड एक्सरसाइज फिजिकल एक्टिविटी तो अगर डाइट जो है वो घर में रहने की वजह से या बिल्कुल वो तो उन्होंने हर वक्त अपना रूटीन ही चेंज कर लिया तो ऑब्वियसली इंसुलिन की डोज एडजस्ट होगी दूसरी बात फिजिकल एक्टिविटी जी अब हम चल नहीं सकते भाई चल नहीं सकते लेकिन जब सुबह सो के उठे तो नाश्ते से पहले ही अगर जैसे छोटे बच्चे पीटी करते हैं ना फिजिकल ट्रेनिंग करते हैं अपनी वो जो स्कूल में असेंबली में तो उस तरह से ही अगर उसने किया या आजकल एक और सोशल मीडिया पे एच हाई इंटेंसिटी इंटरवल ट्रेनिंग कहा है कि आप बाउची खाने में जाएं और किचन स्लैब पर हाथ रख करके पुशअप करें 15 का सा फिर उसके बाद वापस मुड़ जाएं और बैग से उसको पकड़ करके फिर आप अपने आप को ऊपर नीचे करें अगर कोई कहता है कि हम घुटना हमारे पे दर्द है तो वो स्लैब पे हाथ रखे और पूरी लेग को घुटना मोड़े बगैर राइट को ऊपर करे फिर लेफ्ट को ऊपर करे और ये कम से कम 15 से 16 मरतबा करे ऐसे दो तीन सेशन अगर वो दिन में कर रहा है 
और बिल्कुल स्ट्रेट लेट गए और लेग रेजिंग की और पांव इस तरह उठाया कि घुटना ना मुड़े ऊपर होल्ड कर लिया और फिर नीचे लाए असल में सिर्फ डायबिटिक ही पेशेंट की बात नहीं हो रही बल्कि कोई भी बंदा जैसे डॉक्टर ने पैसे मेंशन किया था कि ये तो एक्टिविटी फिजिकल एक्टिविटी तो हम लाजमी है ही हम लोग इन उन लोगों पर जो अभी डायबिटिक नहीं हुए उन पर भी बहुत ज्यादा फोकस करते हैं क्योंकि उनमें भी कम्प्लीकेशन होने के चांसेस बहुत ज्यादा होते हैं जैसे कि आप जानती हैं कि 50 परसेंट से ज्यादा लोग ऐसे होते हैं जो एट द टाइम ऑफ द डायग्नोसिस उन्होंने कोई सिम्टम ही नहीं डेवलप किया होता टाइप टू के होते उनको कोई सिम्टम नहीं होता तो वो किसी किसी नौकरी में कहीं उनका मेडिकल चेकअप हुआ तो पता चल गया किसी और चीज में हुए या कम्प्लीकेशन डेवलप कर ली और उसकी वर्कअप हुआ तो पता चल गया कि बत तो डायबिटिक भी हैं ये वो लोग होते हैं जिनको अगर ये लाइफ स्टाइल समझ में आ जाए और वो इस पर अमल करने के लिए तैयार हो तो आप यकीन करें कि न सिर्फ ये बहुत बड़ी एक सोशल सर्विस होगी एक क्योंकि वो ये लोग सेफ हो सकते हैं फ्रॉम डेवलपिंग डायबिटीज और इनकी डायबिटीज को स्टार्ट होने में मजीद डिले किया जा सकता है थैंक यू सर डॉक्टर जफर इकबाल एंड डॉक्टर उरूज लाल रहमान आप दोनों का एक बार बेहद शुक्रिया कि आप दोनों ने आज हमें इतना इत, एक बहुत ही ज़्यादा इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन हुआ और मुझे पूरी उम्मीद है कि जो लोग हमें सुन रहे हैं हमें देख रहे हैं जिन लोगों ने हमें हमें हाश मानीज ग्रुप ऑफ हॉस्पिटल्स के फेसबुक पेज पर लाइव ज्वाइन किया हुआ है उन लोग उन लोगों को आज बहुत ज़्यादा ये ये सब इन सब बातों की अवेयरनेस हुई होगी कि हाउ टू टू मैनेज डायबिटीज इन द पेंडेमिक ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन और किस तरीके से हमें जो है एक, एक अपने लाइफ स्टाइल को बैलेंस करना है किस तरीके से हमें एक एक बैलेंस डाइट को का जो है इंतखब करना है और हमें देखिए सबसे इम्पोर्टेंट चीज़ ये है कि अगर हम सिर्फ हम सिर्फ सिर्फ डायबिटीज़ की बात नहीं कर रहे हैं इसके अलावा हाई ब्लड प्रेशर है अगर कोई अगर कोई दिल की बीमारी में मुबतरा शख्स है तो किस तरीके से उसको जो है अपनी इस इस चीज़ को लेकर चलना है और अपनी बीमारी को ओवरकम करना है और और अगर कोई अगर हेल्दी पर्सन है तो उसको किस तरीके से इन सब बीमारियों से खुद को महफूज रखना है क्योंकि उस देखिए ना अभी हमारे पास कोविड कोविड नाइन्टीन का जो एक सीनेरियो है उसमें जो है, है एक हेल्थी पर, पर्सन के अलावा ज्यादातर वही सब लोग इफेक्टिव हो रहे हैं और बहुत ज्यादा सीवियर केसेस पर इफेक्ट हो रहे हैं जिनको ये कोमोरबिटी अंडरलाइन डिजीज है तो आज के सेशन में हमें बहुत अच्छी जो है तमाम इन तमाम इंफॉर्मेशन मिली और, और बहुत कुछ हमें जो है सीखने को मिला तो आ, आ, तो आइंदा भी आगे हम इसी तरह के से ही मुख्तलिफ ये आपके बारे में मुख्तलि बीमारियों के बारे में इंफॉर्मेशन लेकर आएंगे कि किस तरीके से मुख्तलि बीमारियाँ हैं और उसको किस तरीके से हमें जो है अपने आप को उन सब उन सब बीमारियों से महफूज रखना है तो आप सब लोग भी प्लीज कोविड नाइन्टीन के आज के आजकल के जो पेंडेमिक है उसमें जो एक जो सेकेंड वेव आई है जो बहुत ही एक बहुत खतरनाक एक वो है वबा और जो लो, लो, हमें उससे जो है अपने आप को महफूज रखना है और हमें अपने साथ साथ अपने घर वालों को भी जो है उस बीमारी से महफूज रखना है और उस भी उस और इस भी इस बीमारी से महफूज रहने का एक बहुत ही हल बहुत ही एक आसान हल है कि हम जो भी हमारे पास एस ओ पीज हैं कि हम जो है अपने इर्द गिर्द के लोगों को जो है वो जो है हम अगर हम कहीं बाहर निकल रहे हैं तो हम मास्क का लाजमी लाजमी इंतखब वो इस्तेमाल करें इसके बाद हम जो है सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग को मेंटेन करें तो ये ये यही सारी चीज़ें हैं जिससे हम जो है कोविड नाइन्टीन की वबा से ख़ुद को भी और अपने घर वालों को भी महफूज रख सकते हैं तो आइंदा तक आइंदा भी एक ऐसे ही इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन के लिए हम आएंगे जब तक के लिए मेरी तरफ से और हाशमानी ग्रुप ऑफ हॉस्पिटल्स की हमारी पूरी टीम की तरफ से अल्लाह हाफिज थैंक यू सो मच अगेन थैंक यू सो मच अल्लाह हाफिज